Hey everybody, Kelly Engineer here, and welcome to episode one of this mod spotlight. Uh, in this spotlight, we're going to be covering every aspect of the 1.15.2 version of Silence Gems created by Silent Chaos 512. Uh, full disclosure, this mod is not in a release state for 1.15, uh, but I wanted to go over it anyway as a setup uh, to set up a baseline for future updates. As updates for this mod comes out, I'll be making a new video to go with it. Uh, explaining what's changed, what's been improved. Uh, I'm starting these spotlights with the following versions as seen on the screen. I'll, I'll put them up. Uh, I'll also, of course, put it in the description as well. Uh, I've been wanting to do the spotlight for a while now. Uh, Silence has, frankly, a ridiculous amount of items and mechanics, and it can be a bit daunting at first. I, I personally love Silence because you actually have to think about what you're doing when you're creating new items and uh, the 1.15.2 versions have a particular emphasis on exploration. Uh, last thing, uh, I'll be treating Silence Gems and Gear separately. I have a separate spotlight for Silent Gear and Silence Mechanisms lined up to go over those mechanics. However, to uh, if I were to combine them here, it would just add to the confusion. A uh, long story short, gear and mechanisms rely on silence gems as a baseline. It needs to be installed for the others to work properly. But uh, yeah, enough of my rambling. Let's get on with world generation. All right, so when you start in a world with silence gems installed, you need to know that you're not going to find all 16 overworld gems in the caves below your spawn point. Silence gems will only spawn a set amount of gems in any given biome. When a new world is created, the mod decides what gems will appear and in what biome they'll appear in based on what you've entered into the configs. By default, a minimum of four types of gems and a maximum of eight will appear. So, four gems for a dark forest, eight gems for a plains, and that is unique to this seed. So, whenever I am loaded up, whenever I've loaded up this seed, a dark forest will only have these four gems. That's phosphophyllite. Onyx, Green Sapphire, and Morganite. But in a forest, I'll get six different gems. Uh, keep in mind that, so I'll get the Phosphophyllite and the Green Sapphire in a dark forest. Well, in a forest, a regular forest, I'll also get the Phosphophyllite and Green Sapphire. But uh, the Topaz, yeah, Topaz is unique to the forest, and the Peridot is something I'll also only get in a forest. Oh, and Tanzanite. So yeah, it's not... Uh, yeah, just going by to all five of these biomes is not guaranteed that I will get all 16 gems. I may have to go to, I don't know, seven different biomes, eight different biomes before I end up getting the whole set. But uh, the fact remains that whenever I go to a forest biome, a forest by itself, I will get these six gems. In the savanna, I'll get these seven. Same with the desert, these seven. And then in the plains, I'll get these eight gems. And uh, just to further illustrate the point, I've gone to three different plains biomes, and uh, those plains biomes are right here, right here, and of course right here at the spawn point. Uh, so I've collected all of the gems in the 4x4 chunk area, and as you can see, I get the same gems no matter what. The green sapphire, onyx, amethyst, peridot, amber, heliodor, agate, and opal. So yeah, three different planes, the same exact gems, and that is unique to this seed. The gems require at least an iron level pickaxe in order to mine. So uh, you'll get one gem every time that you break one ore with a regular pickaxe. It is affected by fortune, so you can use a fortune-based pick and get uh, two or three of the ore. Oh, don't worry about that. But... Uh, a weird bug is the golden pickaxe should be harvest level 2 as well. Um, however, you see that harvest level 2 is red. That means if I try to break this, I get nothing. Um, which is really weird because if you look over at this silver ore, I get silver ore if I break it. So that's just a bug that I'm going to have to report. And as of this version, if you try to break a gem with a gold pickaxe, it's not going to work properly. But we'll get that out of here. You can alternatively put the ore, if you collected it with a silk touch pickaxe, you can alternatively put it inside a furnace and you'll get the gem that way as well. So look over here. Here we go. Yeah, ruby ore, put it in a furnace, bam, get one ruby. Also, part of the world generation is silver. A total of two veins can spawn per chunk 
and they're used to spawn some of the more complicated items in the mod. Uh, they require an iron level or higher pickaxe to mine out, and they need to be thrown into a furnace to get the bar. If Silence Mechanisms is installed in your pack, then that mod will take care of this ore generation instead of Silence Gems. The config file recognizes if Mechanisms is installed and automatically sets the gem spawn to zero. Um, odd thing that I've noticed right now, uh, same with the gold pickaxe showing the harvest level 2 and it not dropping whenever I break it. Um, yeah, harvest level 2 is also red on the silver ore, but if I break it, it gives me the ore. So yeah, it's a really weird bug, and I'm going to include that in my bug report in regards to uh, harvest levels and breaking. Lastly for ore generation is chaos ore, the single most important item for progression in this mod. Uh, chaos gems are needed to build all helpful items and tools. Uh, this is especially prevalent in silent gear, where chaos iron is needed for tool upgrades, but I'll get into that in that separate mod spotlight. Uh, it can spawn between one and two veins per chunk, and this can of course be edited in the configs, but a vein is pretty large to begin with, and there really shouldn't be any need to. Uh, for reference, looking over here, out of everything that I have uh, spawned out, or mined out rather with the RF tools builder this is how much chaos ore that I've gotten and uh, yeah throw it into a furnace or you can break it with a pickaxe and you'll get that gem alternatively use the uh, there we go alternatively use a silk touch pickaxe throw it into a furnace and you'll get one gem so yeah there's that uh, basically if you see chaos ore get it don't wait uh, you'll find that you will never have enough Chaos Crystals when you're playing with Silence Gems. Uh, mainly because... Where is the Chaos Iron? Here we go. Chaos Dust. So Chaos Dust makes the unfired Chaos Iron. Chaos Iron Ingot. And that is used to make your Supercharger, Token Enchanter, all of the essentially end game stuff that you're going to need. Uh, these block of Chaos Irons is going to need is going to be needed for your Supercharger. Um... Yeah, if you see the Chaos Ore, get it. Additionally, there are Geodes. Geodes are largest clumps of hardened stone, hardened netherrack, or hardened endstone that hide gems of their respective dimensions inside them. Whenever you're spelunking, you have a rare chance of finding one of these Geodes, and if you don't have the means to survive the end or the nether, then they're an excellent way to get gems from those areas. Um... So here we have all of the spoils of the areas I mined out before the episode started. As you can see, the nether geode seems to be the most common, followed by the end stone, and then lastly, the overworld geode, the hardened stone. Uh, the hardened stone geode being the rarest honestly makes sense because you're going to find the overworld gems regardless. One good thing about them, though, is uh, I harvested this specific hardened geode from a plains biome. So uh, you can't get, looking at the plains gems, these are the only ones that you can get from the plains by default in this seed. But a hardened geode gave me the opportunity to get aquamarine, gave me the opportunity to get topaz, sapphire. These are not stuff that I can normally get in a plains biome. So I got really lucky and found gems that I can't normally find in this biome just while I was blunking. Uh, alternatively, down here, this is a nether geode that was also in the area so i'm going to switch back to survival mode and i'm going to try to break this hardened netherrack you see it's going pretty slow uh, roughly about the same speed as obsidian it's also the same hardness as obsidian so you can use them as uh, defense blocks as well but once you break through the first one or two layers uh yeah and it's always one or two layers before you actually get to the gems inside there we go so once you break through you have the nether gems and like i said before if you can't actually survive in the nether and you're pretty early game but you have a diamond pickaxe then you have a means of making nether rated tools if uh if silent gear is installed so yeah don't pass up the opportunity to break open one of these geodes sometimes you can get lucky and find a geode on the surface this one was extra lucky because after breaking the dirt it revealed the geode without having to break the hardened stone or the hardened nether rack in this case uh, a little tidbit about ore generation. When ore generation is happening, it looks for stone and stone-related items, so andesite, diorite, and replaces it with the designated ore randomly. 
It does not, however, look at dirt as an item to replace. So if you see a geode sticking out of the dirt, you can safely get all of the gems inside without any problems. No hardened stone can appear since ore generation doesn't know how to replace dirt with it. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind if you find a geode on the surface. Also scattered around the world are flowers called glow roses. Uh, there are 16 total in the overworld, one named after each ore. In previous versions, these uh, these glow roses gave you one of the uh, one of vanilla Minecraft's associated dyes. This is no longer the case. Glow roses exist to provide light. That's it. It's a way to get around torch spam. By themselves, they provide a light level of 10. I'm going to turn on F3 right now. So. Client light, 7 block. Oh, wow, it is not providing a light level of 10. It's providing 7. Uh, by default, they should only be providing 10. That is weird. Yeah, there we go. Okay, light level, 10 block. So this glow rose is providing a light level of 10. However, if you place a glow rose in a flower pot, I'm going to time set... Midnight. So see, it is dark around here right now, but if I provide a glow rose to a flower pot and I hand on top of it, stand on top of it again, you see that I have a 15 light level in this area now. So 10 without the flower pot, 15 with the flower pot, and torches. Here we go. And torches provide a light level of 14. So you're doing better by using the glow roses, and they are everywhere so yeah don't hesitate to use the glow don't hesitate to use the glow roses if you don't want torch spam everywhere uh keeping up with the plants fluffy puffs let's go to the fluffy puffs um over here and i'm going to change the time back to uh daytime here we go so fluffy puffs Fluffy puff plants are scattered throughout the world, and they're uh, quite rare and don't spawn in large batches. I had to search quite a while before I even found this one. Um, one is all you need to get moving, and you can plant it just like any other seed. So I'm going to go into survival. And break it. See, all I get is that fluffy puff seed. One is all that you need to get started. Plant it like a crop, and you're going to be swimming in fluffy puffs soon enough. Uh, in older versions, you could just break the grass, and you had a chance of getting the fluffy puff seeds. Uh, that is no longer the case. All you're going to get is the regular seeds from breaking the grass. So, uh, yeah, search high and low, and hopefully you get lucky and manage to find one of the fluffy puff plants. Another odd bug with the fluffy puff is that they don't register in Wayla. If you look up at the top, yeah, it doesn't... Uh, Dutch register. It also doesn't register in JEI, so I don't have the fluffy puff plant here. I can't just spawn one into my inventory. If you uh, try to middle click it as well, it doesn't spawn into your inventory in creative mode like any other block does. Middle click and bam, I have an oak log or grass block. Yeah, that doesn't work with the fluffy puffs. I'm going to report that as well because that is most definitely a bug that it doesn't even register in Wayla. So uh, I think we're up to, yeah, we're up to four bugs right now. This is. This is great. Um, but yeah, that is all I'm going to say on Fluffy Puffs. I'll go over the Fluffy Puff crop later on. Before we move on to the Nether World generation, I do want to go over one last thing in the overworld. And that is the fact that uh, loot tables have been changed. So yeah, I'm going to teleport to Buried Treasure over here and look inside. And you see that. I'm going to get gems inside of loot tables. Uh, they're typically going to be of the classic set and the dark set. The dark set is the stuff that you find in the nether. Um, and very, very rarely, I've only found one chest that has a uh, light gem. That's the stuff that you find in the end. So that was a buried treasure map. If I go to a desert temple, here we go. A desert temple, I'm going to find Morganite, part of the classic set. Classic set. Very rarely will you find end. In fact, a, yeah, in another world that I created. Yeah, only you, Clace, okay. In another world that I created, I actually found a light gem in a desert temple, but that was it. And I, I found, I think, ten different buried treasures, uh, four different desert temples, and only one of them had end gems in it, light level gems in them. So yeah, loot tables have been changed 
to accept Silence Gems related materials. Next, we're going to go over the Nether, and there's really not much to say about the Nether when it's just Silence Gems installed. Uh, Silent Gear adds significantly more stuff. All you're going to find is gems and glow roses associated with those gems. These glow roses serve the exact same purpose as the overworld, offering a light level of 10 and then 15 if they are inside a flower pot. Uh, however, the way that gems spawn is different than the overworld. So since there is only one biome in the nether, and that biome is hell, uh, then that means that you can't really go to other biomes in order to find different gems. So instead they use a region style system. Uh, by default, the region for the nether is an 8 chunk by 8 chunk area. So I just have to go from 8 chunks that way, 8 chunks that way, and I will only find the same exact types of gems. So I'll probably only find the Euclase. I'll find the Beno, uh, Benitoite. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. But uh, yeah, I'll only find a certain amount of gems in that type of area. So it's based on region size instead of different types of biomes. Um, and other than that, that's really all there is to say about the nether. I'm going to go into the end because there are two last things related to world generation that you can find in the end. So here we are in the end, and the end operates in the same region style that the nether does. Only the region is a six chunk by six chunk area so yeah in that six chunk by six chunk area you're only going to find fluorite or whatever gems it happen to be i haven't gone around and collected all of the gems in this six chunk by six chunk area but you'll also find the glow roses associated with end style uh with end named ores also you're going to find this new material which is ender essence ender essence isn't used for much in uh, Silence Gems, uh, Ender Essence is going to give you these Ender Crystals. The Ender Crystals are used to make teleporters. Teleporters are very handy. Uh, and uh, it's also used to make a Ender Frost token. And what is that for Frostwalker? Yeah, that's, uh, that's unimportant. But you'll mainly be using this uh, Ender Crystal inside of Silent Gear. Because Silent Gear will create you ultra charging agents uh ultra charging agents you're going to need a lot of them if you want to hmm, pardon me you're gonna need a lot of them if you want to uh, supercharge your silent gear items and uh for that you're going to need a lot of ender essence ore you need a diamond level or higher pickaxe in order to mine it out and yeah that's really all there is to say about that the last thing is There is a new mob that spawns inside the end, and here it is, right here. This ender slime will drop a... There we go. Well, of course it didn't drop any, but ender slime will drop a different type of slime for you. Here we go, ender slime ball. So ender slime balls are also needed for token enchanting, and... Uh, they used to be used for more, and they probably will be used for more uh, as more updates to the mod come out. But uh, yeah, you're going to need these Ender Slime Crystals in order to do the Ultra Transmutation. And Ultra Transmutation is uh, it's very useful if you just need one more or a couple more different types of gems. Um, but more on that when we get to it. So yeah, Ender Slimes. They spawn, kill them, collect the Ender Slime Ball, and yeah, there we go. And that is, uh, that is all that I have to say on world generation. Uh, I am going to break these up into more uh, succinct episodes because, yeah, I, uh, mo my mod spotlights in the past have been like an hour long or 45 to 50 minutes long. So I don't want that. I'm only going to go over one aspect of the mod in each episode. And then I'm just going to, no matter how short it is, it's only going to be one aspect. This one was world generation. And in the next one, I'm actually going to go over the building, the gems themselves, what those gems are used for, and the uh, associated building blocks that those gems can create. But I am Kelly Engineering. Hope that you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye <laughs>